I changed the entire combat system for my indie game with Slide. This all started a few weeks ago when my sister tested my game's combat mechanics. As she played an early demo of the game, she picked up a sword nearby, and from a distance, she saw another one. She asked me if she could pick it up as well. In our game's design, it's not possible to equip two weapons, since the left hand is supposed to be reserved for shields. This playtest led me to change the entire combat system for Wisplight. I don't want to restrict the players in choosing the weapons that they will equip. I want to give players freedom to choose the equipment that they will be using. So in this devlog, we will talk about the changes that I made to our combat system along with the new features for our skill tree and several related gameplay mechanics that will expand the game's core gameplay loop even further. For those of you who are new here, I'm June, and I'm making this game where we play as a monster on an island where humans are invading, and our goal is to eliminate them and reconquer our territory. If you're interested in following our development, feel free to subscribe to get updated. Let's begin! So first, I decided to have the skeleton equip multiple weapons. I started with the sword, but adding this mechanic leads to another set of problems. The biggest ones are the animations. I need to make new animations for the skeleton when it's holding two weapons. Previously, we just had animations for when the skeleton is holding a weapon on the right. Now, we need to make one when the skeleton is holding one on the left. So I simply mirrored the animation from the right hand weapon and tweaked it a bit to make it a bit different. With the left-handed weapon animation done, it's not really over yet since this is just for the basic attack animations. We need to make animations for when the skeleton does a dash attack and an overhead strike when sprinting. These are fairly simple since I just have to mirror the right-handed weapon animations to make these new sets of animation. Now that the animations for the left hand weapons are done, I thought about things like what if the skeleton does not have any weapon? We need to make a way for it to fight and deal small damage. So I made some animations for unarmed and it looks like this. I then proceeded in making the two handed animations. Basically, by wielding two weapons, I wanted us to deal more damage by giving us more opportunity to land hits faster. So this is what I came up with. The strikes are much faster compared to holding just one weapon. Now, with this new animation added to cater dual wielding, we need to modify the animations for when the skeleton does the dash attacks and the overhead strikes. So I simply use these animations. This is for the quick dash attack, and this one is for the overhead strike. They both deal twice the damage since two weapons are hitting the enemy at the same time. After these attacks, I then need to make a follow-up animation for the bonus combo attacks when we upgrade these skills by activating the bonus combo action like the quick slash for the quick dash attack and the side sweep combo for the overhead strike. The combo looks like this for the quick dash. It directly transitions to a quick slash attack then proceeds to the normal attack animation. As for the overhead strike, it transitions to a side swipe then to the normal attack animations. Now that I've finished making the animations for dual wielding, I then made a new system for the items lying on the ground. I made all of them part of the object pooling system where we can spawn them only when needed. Also, I added them to our spawner systems so that we can just spawn them in key areas that we need weapons and shields to spawn. With this out of the way, I then thought about a new system of getting weapons and shields. So I thought, what if the weapons and shield that the enemies are equipping will drop and we can pick them up? This led me to another system that I made, which grants us the ability to pick up items that our enemies drop, including the maces and torches that the torch bearer is using, as well as several varieties of shields that the guards are wielding. In the future, weapon durability will be part of the game, so having a system that drops enemies' weapons will be essential for us to pick up any weapons anytime when our current equipment breaks. This also increases the diversity of weapons we are using and pushes the combat gameplay to a different level, which will lead us to the next feature that I made, the different weapon types. So in Wisplite, we have different weapons that the skeleton and the armor can equip. We have the blade weapons, which includes a variety of swords with different damage modifiers and weapon reach. Mostly, bladed weapons are focused on dealing health damage to the enemies. 
Then we have the blunt weapons, which includes maces, the torches, and any other club-like weapons. They will have different damage modifiers and weapon reach. Most blunt weapons are focused on dealing damage to the enemy's posture, easily stunning them for free hits or to execute a critical attack. Then we have fire damage. This is the first element type damage that we have in our game, and for now, this only applies to the torches that the torch bearers are using. Our skeleton can now wield them, thus leading me to make a burning system mechanic to all enemies hit by the torches. Fire damage from the torches cannot be guarded, so it's handy when dealing with mercenary guards that are defense focused. We'll have more weapon variety in the future, like the spear type weapons. But for now, we'll just focus on these weapon types. As for the shields, for now, we have different shield designs. But they don't have any gameplay changing mechanics yet. But in the future, we'll have different stats for them. Maybe some have increased durability. Or some deal more damage when using shield bash. Or some have a bonus stability regeneration, and so on. For now, they'll just be different by their design. Having diversified these weapons, this also opens new skills to be added in the skill tree. For example, when using a sword, we have a critical attack called a sword thrust where we can grab the stunned enemy and thrust our sword dealing critical damage. With the blunt weapons added to the mix, this will not look good if we thrust a mace to the enemy. So this led me to make a different skill tree variation for this critical strike specific for blunt type weapons. Here we have the crushing blow. This will have smaller health damage to the enemies, but this will knock them down, disabling them for a few seconds. This skill fits the blunt weapons since they deal more posture damage, making enemies get stunned frequently. So now we have the option on our skill tree to choose our critical strike finishers. Next, I added new skills for the player who prefer using dual wielding. So at the moment, the special skill that we have is the shield bash where we can activate by holding the right mouse button and clicking the left to perform the shield bash. Using this keybind, I made three new variations specifically addressed to the dual wielding types. First, we have the blade fury, which we can activate with the same key bindings as the shield bash. But we need to equip two blade type weapons with us. This will make the skeleton perform a quick whirlwind blade strike to the enemies, dealing quick successive damage. This also comes with upgrade nodes to decrease the stability cost when performing this skill. I also added this cool looking glow effect when you right click in preparation for the special attack. For the dual maze type, this will have the skeleton perform a bone crusher attack that will render the enemy knocked down. We can perform this by the same key binds as the shield bash. And the requirement for performing this is when you're sprinting and holding two blunt weapons. Next is the arsonist skill that will let us light our skeleton's core with fire, making a huge explosion on the area, knocking out enemies nearby. This can be done when carrying two torches or any weapons with fire attributes to them. This skill also damages and breaks the skeleton, but it quickly reconjures it automatically. So those are the changes to our entire combat system. The next devlogs, I will showcase in detail the skills that the Skeleton Warrior had. Also, major thanks to my patrons for supporting development of this fight. Till next time.